Hi, in this short talk we're going to talk about Chapter 5, Aspatial Queries. The next talk that I have will be on spatial queries. So I have two separate lectures on queries because we're really delving into the power of GIS data and the power of GIS in terms of making spatial database queries that you can do with filters in Excel or spatial queries when, in which we start to see how far are things located from each other, how many things are located within a certain distance or within this feature or near this feature. So we're going to, chapter 2 is going to be broken into two separate lectures. I want to make sure we get them down both, get them down correctly because we can start to make compound features, compound query queries which I'm going to look at at the end of the next chapter. One of our key element of GIS is to analyze spatial data, and that's one of the big things that differentiates it from a traditional information system. So we can analyze spatial data, but we still need to talk about the, the way, the method and the mode by which we do this for non-spatial data, the tabular data. We have a spatial queries. We make questions about the attributes. How many states have a population greater than this? How many census groups have a population less than this? Because if you're a social worker, social science major, you can start to see, oh, let me look at all of my students who need after school care or don't have transportation. I bet they're going to be located in maybe more low income neighborhoods. Or let me see where all my students are compared to the number of single parent homes. That's information that's collected from the census, believe it or not. Uh, they can be performed by database software alone. Okay, so we can do these filters in Excel if we really want to, or if you're familiar with those. And you might have done those in SPSS or SAS or whatever you work with. We also have spatial queries, which we'll talk about next. Where is something? It's associated with location, distances, areas, perimeters, all that other good stuff. And we talked about before, we have the census has a variety of different types of data. We have interval, ratio, nominal data. You can see the, the left justified data up here, even though it looks like numbers, they're not treated as numbers. Okay, and like I say here, some cases numbers are treated as strings. Okay, they're just unique identifying numbers to identify states, counties, and then sub-county units such as tracts census block groups, census blocks. But I can see population here. I can sort this population. I can find, let me look for the population density to be less than this or more than this. And that's what we'll focus on now. So when we focus on uh, selecting data within tables, data within tables can be picked or selected. And if it's highlighted in blue on the table, it'll be highlighted in blue on the map. We can sort it, look for a particular feature that we want selected, and if it's highlighted, it'll be highlighted in the map, like I said before. So for this one right here, if I just hold down my left mouse key, hold down my left mouse key, and just grab these three, these will be highlighted in the table, and then I can move over, and I can see they're highlighted in the map here. Okay, so anything along this left edge here of my table, when I right mouse click on my layer in my table of contents, right mouse click, open it up, I can click on it, and you'll see that it's open there. Okay, and I can click on any one that I want. I can hold the shift and the control to hold down multiple uh, multiple records. I can click this button right here to switch the selection. So I had three out of 53 before. If I switch it, basically it's going to be give me all the ones we didn't have before. That's what we call a logical knot, N-O-T. And then we can look at relational operators. So we can look at things that are equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to. Okay, you've probably seen these in math class. They have the little line underneath, but we can't really express that in the digital environment. Or not equal to. And we also have Boolean operators. You've probably seen these Venn diagrams before because we want to satisfy, we want to make queries that satisfy two different criteria, or just one or the other. And like I talked about with the not, I just want to find everything else that doesn't satisfy it. We also have one here called exclusive or that I haven't used very much, but only satisfies one and only one criteria. And when we look at ArcGIS, we have an SQL statement generator here. So when I go into my ArcGIS, okay, well, we talk about that in the tutorials, but I have a statement generator in which I can click on the fields, the operator that we're looking at, and the unique values. Okay, and we generate something called an SQL statement, structured query la language statement, that gives me the field, some operator, and a value okay, to compare it to. And SQL is the language that which we communicate with a database. Okay, some people are straight up 
SQL programmers, and all it does is talk to the database, this underlying database, and we're able to do it not programmatically, but we're able to do it by just clicking on the fields, the operators, and then putting in some value that we want. It might be a numerical value that we need to put in ourselves. So you can see here, I want to find population 2000 is greater than 5 million. Okay. So I can see population is greater than 5 million. Up at the top, I see layers, states. Method, create a new selection. So I want to create a brand new selection for states where the population of each state, population 2000, is greater than 5 million. And these are all the unique values that I have here, since there's only 50 or 51 states. Okay, and I say 51 because it'll include Washington, D.C. here, even though it's not a state, it's a district or whatever it is as part of our GIS data layer. And when I click on that, you can see these are all the states that have population greater than 5 million. Okay, you can see North Carolina is included here. You can see South Carolina isn't. Okay, so, and these are all highlighted. Now, I want to pick out population is greater than 5 million and the population is less than 10 million. So now, what does this and mean? Okay, we want to have one, we want to find states that satisfy both of these. So if we had 12 million, or California is 25 million, is that going to satisfy it? Probably not, because it's not less than 10 million. It's greater than 5 million, but it's not less than 10 million. So this and means it needs to satisfy both of them. Now, when we click on this, you can see, oh, California is gone. Texas, the little Texas up here is gone. Florida is gone. New York, Pennsylvania are gone. North Carolina is still there because it has a population between 5 million and 10 million. So you can see the power, the power of these ands and ors. Okay. And we have also valid SQL statements. So I can do subregions. Okay. When I click on, you can see here, East, North, Central. These are the types of regions here within the state. It's in quotes. So basically, that means it's nominal data, the name of something. Can I say the name of something is greater than something? No, I can say stuff about it, like population, households, or whatever we did before. But I can't say nominal data is. So you can see the text here. So you can see an expression like this isn't going to be valid, because I can't say nominal data is greater than nominal, some other nominal value. I can sort them, but that really doesn't have a lot of value. Equal to, yeah, they'll be equal to each other. And so when I click on that, these are these in these East, North, Central, Great Lakes, or whatever the thing was. Um, we have some records here, because for your exams, I'm going to give you a small table, something like this, and I'm going to ask you for the SQL statement. So I look at something like population square miles greater than 200. Well, this is pop 90 square miles. This is the number of people per square mile. This measures arithmetic population density greater than two, 200. I see one, two, three, four. Okay, four of these are. Let's see the other one. I want to find population square miles greater than 100 and less than 200. And while we're looking at this, if it were exactly 100 or exactly 200, would it be counted? No, because it doesn't say greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. It doesn't have the equal to sign. So I want, basically, I want to look for anything that has a 1, that starts with a 1, 100 here. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, these four. Okay, my next question, trick one, what if I put an or here? How many would be satisfied? How many of these here are going to have a population greater than 100 or less than 200? All of them, okay? Like this 9187, it's got a population greater than 100. That means check, check, okay? This one that's 74 doesn't satisfy the first one, but it satisfies the second one, okay? So those are something to be careful of. So even though they look the same, the and, the or, there's no difference. If I were to return this, I would have 8. Another thing about querying strings, we can't compare strings like I showed before. They can't be greater than or equal to, but we can look for strings or parts of strings within each other. So if I want to look for something like it, and a lot of times when I use the word like, it means to compare strings. So something that has an ER dollar si uh, percent sign, it starts with ER, okay, whether it's Eric or Erica. Okay, We can use these wildcard characters 
Okay, and I actually, I'm looking at crime data here, and I ran something called a summarize, so I counted the number of times the word assault appear, appeared. I have seven different assaults here for all the different crimes. There's probably 40 different crimes that I collected from my GIS database for the city of Durham that was provided. And I've got simple assault, aggravated assault, aggravated assault with sexual motive, non, all of these. Okay, and if I ran a query, I would just say, is it this, or this, or this, or this, or this, or this, or this? I wouldn't do and, right? I wouldn't want to do and because it can't be all of them at the same time. Okay, so I'd run an or. Instead of doing that, why don't I just look for the word assault in it? Okay, and I can do charge description, which is the name of the field, like assault, and you can see the parentheses, uh, you can see the um, time sign there, the asterisk before and after, and that stands for wild card. You notice here, here it had simple assault at the beginning, here it had assault in the middle, here it had assault at the end, okay, here it has assault twice, okay, and basically a wild card is, I don't care what's before, I don't care what's after, I just want to find the word salt. Okay. And then we can also do compound queries. Okay. So we can do something like select from current selection. Remember what I had before? Create a new selection. It's just going to get rid of everything and create a brand new selection. Now I can do select from current selection. So now when I start to compare my A spatial queries with my spatial queries, it treats it as an AND. Be careful when you select from your current selection because if I say, all right, I have nothing, and I say, give me all of the assaults, but select from the current selection. If I'm picking from nothing, what's how many things are going to result? Nothing. Okay, so be very careful. Like I tell a lot of people, computers are stupid. They're going to do whatever you tell it to. So if you tell it to give me an or when you really want an and, it's not going to tell you otherwise. It'll give you everything. Okay, so the end state, the final person who makes sure this data makes sense is going to be you. Okay, so if it returns nothing and you know it should be returning something, make sure you, you check on something like select from current selection or add to current selection. Okay, so you see something like this. Okay, these are all of, I think these are all of my assaults and I want to say day of the week equals Friday. So I just want to do all the assaults that occurred on Friday. So I can do select from current selection. And now you can see all the assaults with the day of the week Friday. Here's an ass aggravated assault on Wednesday. Didn't include that. Okay? And that's about it for this lecture. And next we'll talk about spatial queries.